so in this video I will solve some multiple choice questions from the AP physics exam for the topic of kinematics uh, so the first question, uh, an object that's moving with constant speed travels once around the circular path, so which of the following is are true concerning this motion? The displacement is zero, the average speed is zero, or the acceleration is zero. So the object is traveling with constant speed uh, once around the circular path, okay? Uh, so the answer is A which is one only so only the displacement is zero okay because the initial position and final positions are the same but the average speed which is the total distance traveled over time is not zero because the total distance is the circumference of the circle uh, and also statement three is uh, false because the acceleration is not zero and this is because the velocity uh, changed uh, uh, not uh, not in magnitude but in direction okay so even if its magnitude is constant the velocity was changing direction and so there is non-zero centripetal acceleration and so the correct answer for one is uh, a okay uh, so for question two, uh, it says that at time t equal t1, an object's velocity is given by the vector v1, so this vector, and um, a short time later, which is at t2, the object's velocity um, is given by this vector. Uh, so it says if uh, the magnitude of v2 is equal to the, to the magnitude of v1, then which of uh, which of the following vectors here best uh, illustrates the object's average acceleration between t1 and t2, okay? So the average acceleration is equal to delta v over delta t. And because delta t is a positive scalar, then the direction of the average acceleration is in the same direction as delta v. So delta v is equal to v2 minus v1, uh, which is v2 plus minus v1. So this is V2, okay, and this is minus V1. So it's the same as this vector, but in the opposite direction. And, th and then this is the sum of V2 plus minus V1 here. So this is delta V. And, uh, and so this is the direction of the average acceleration. So the answer is C here. Uh, so question three, uh, which of the following is our true? If an object's acceleration is constant, then it must move in a straight line. And two, if an object's acceleration is zero, then its speed must remain constant. And three, if an object's speed remains uh, constant, then its acceleration must be zero. Um, and the answer for three is C, which is the statement two uh, only. Uh, so statement one, uh, is false because for example uh, for a projectile um, if we have a projectile motion uh, it only experiences a constant acceleration due to gravity directed downward uh, throughout its motion um, but still it is traveling in a curved path okay so uh, if an object uh, object acceleration is constant uh, then it does not necessarily move in a straight line uh, and statement two is uh, true because if an object's acceleration is zero, then its speed must uh, remain constant, right? Um, because uh, it means when the object's acceleration is zero, it means the velocity uh, does not change. It does not change in magnitude and it does not change in direction. Uh, so statement three is false because um, an object whose speed remains constant but whose velocity vector is changing, so uh, which means the magnitude of the velocity is constant but the direction of the velocity is changing, is uh, is accelerating. Okay, so the acceleration is not necessarily zero uh, if the object's speed remains constant. Uh, so the answer for question uh, three is C. Uh, so for question four, a baseball is thrown uh, straight upward. So what is the ball's acceleration at its highest point here? 
Um, so the acceleration of an object moving just under gravity is equal to g uh, directed downward throughout its flight, okay? Uh, if the object is near the Earth's uh, surface. So, uh, so at each point here, uh, the acceleration magnitude is g and its direction is downward, okay? Uh, so constant acceleration throughout the flight. Um, but the velocity uh, changed direction uh, and magnitude, okay? So the velocity first decrease, it's directed upwards and reach um, zero at the maximum height and then change direction downwards and is increasing. Uh, so for four, the answer is C. And for five, how long would it take a car starting from rest and accelerating uniformly in a straight line at five meter per second square to cover a distance of 200 meters, okay? Uh, so we use this uh, kinematic equation. Uh, it starts from rest, so the initial velocity is zero, um, and the time it takes to cover 200 meters is equal to nine seconds. So the answer is A. Uh, so for question six, a rock is dropped off a cliff and uh, strikes the ground with an impact velocity of 30 meters per second. So how high was the cliff? So this is a free fall motion. Um, so V naught is equal to zero because it is dropped from rest. Uh, and uh, if we take the Y axis positive upwards, then G is negative downwards, okay? And um, uh, we can take uh, Y naught is equal to zero at the point of uh, dropping the rock, okay? So the kinematic equations for free fall are the same as for the one-dimensional x motion in a straight line, um, except that we change a by minus g, okay? And uh, we replace uh, x by y. Uh, so we use this equation. So y naught is equal to 0, v naught is equal to 0, and y is equal to v squared over minus 2g, and we substitute, uh, so V is minus 30 meter per second because when it hits uh, the ground, the velocity is directed downward, so it's minus, okay? And this gives Y equal minus 45 meter per second uh, below the dropping point. So the answer is D. Uh, so for question 7, a stone is thrown horizontally with an initial speed of 10 meter per second from a bridge and if air resistance could be ignored, how long would it take the stone to strike the water 80 meters uh, below the bridge? So this is the projectile motion here. The initial velocity is, uh, has only uh, a horizontal component. Um, so we want to find uh, the time it takes the stone, stone to strike the ground. Um, so the initial y component of velocity is zero, and we take y not equal zero, and we, we use this equation. Uh, so uh, t is equal to square root of minus 2y over g. And y, we take it as minus uh, 80 meters below the y naught, so it's minus. And this gives t equal 4 seconds. So the answer is... Um, C. Uh, so note here that although we were given the initial horizontal velocity, um, it's irrelevant because we were able to uh, find the time of impact just from the height, okay? Uh, so for question 8, a soccer ball at rest on the ground is kicked with an initial velocity of 10 meters per second at a launch angle of 30 degrees calculate its total flight time, assuming that air resistance is negligible, okay? Um, so this is the trajectory of the uh, ball, okay? Uh, so we want to find the total flight time. So first we find the time it takes the ball to reach the top of its parabolic trajectory. Uh, and we call it T1. So at T1, the vertical velocity will reach zero. Okay, uh, because the vertical uh, y component of velocity will decrease reaching zero here and then it will uh, increase again uh, downwards, um, but the horizontal velocity will not change throughout the motion. So the time 
uh, the half time here is equal to v naught sine theta naught over g because we set v y uh, VY equals zero at this um, the top of the trajectory point and the total time is 2 t1 so it's equal to 2 times 10 uh, sine 30 degrees over 10 equal 1 second so the answer is b uh, so for question 9, a stone is thrown horizontally with an initial speed of 30 meters per second from a bridge. Um, so find the stone's total speed when it enters the water 4 seconds later and ignore air resistance. Uh, so this is how the motion of the stone looks like and here when it hits uh, the water it, it is at the time of 4 seconds. Okay. Uh, so we want to find the total speed at this point. So the horizontal speed does not change throughout the motion. So it will remain 30 meters per second. Um, and the initial uh, y component of the speed is zero because it was thrown horizontally. Okay. So it has only an x component uh, initially of velocity. And then we can calculate the y component of the velocity here by substituting for t equal 4 seconds. Um, so uh, vy naught is equal to 0 and we get vy at this point and then the total um, velocity at this point, the magnitude of the total velocity is given by this equation which is 50 meter per second. Um, so the answer is c. Uh, so for question 10, which of the following statements is true concerning the motion of an ideal projectile launched at an angle of 45 degrees to the horizontal? Uh, so this motion looks like this with the initial angle of 45 degrees. So A, the acceleration vector points um, opposite to the velocity vector on the way up and in the same direction as the velocity vector on the way down. Um, and B, the speed at the top of the, of the trajectory is C. Uh, and C, the object's total speed remains constant uh, during the entire flight. And uh, D, the horizontal speed decreases on the way up and increases on the way down. And E, the vertical speed decreases on the way up and increase on the way down. So the answer for 10 is E. Okay. Uh, so let's check why the uh, other statements are false. So the first statement is false here because the acceleration does not change direction during the motion. Okay, uh, For the projectile motion, the acceleration has a constant magnitude and direction, um, which is downward, uh, and a magnitude of uh, 10 meter per second square at each point of the flight. Okay. Um, and the uh, statement B is false because the speed at the top of the trajectory here is not zero, but only the y component of that speed is zero at the top, but the x component is not zero. Uh, and uh, statement C is false because it says the object's total speed remains constant during the entire flight, but the object's total speed is not constant, uh, only the x component is constant, the y component um, first uh, uh, is decreased and then it increases again so it accelerates um, at the rate of the gravitational acceleration. Okay, And D, it says the horizontal speed decreases on the way up and increases on the way down. But the horizontal speed does not change throughout the motion, so it's constant throughout the motion. Uh, because there is no component of acceleration along the x-direction. Uh, so only statement E is correct, okay? Uh, so thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in the next video.